Shall be good. Hello, hopefully we're uh, up and running and live now. Um, welcome to uh, another live session our, in our community clay cave. It's um, community clay time and we're making otters today. Ooh, very shiny. I put a bit of skin cream on and I'm coming up beautifully red on camera. Brilliant. So I'm just going to sign myself in as well so I can see comments a bit better. But welcome, really welcome to, uh, to our Friday. It's the weekend almost and uh, that's rather exciting. Hello Sophie. Giles, hello. How are you doing? I can't read very well from here. So I'm trying a slightly different setup today so I can actually see the monitor and the things that are going on screen as well. So I'm gonna have to loom in to actually touch the camera and, uh, and raise myself up, but that's rather good actually. In fact, that's working much better. Hello, Nosy Parkin. Brilliant, so I'm without Hello Hunt Knives as well. And Jojo, hi, Andy Greenacre's joined us. Brilliant, I'm without my camera person today. Um, she's having to work elsewhere. Unfortunately, so I don't need my phone actually. So um, yes, today we're going to be making otters. It's a very exciting day because not only are we making otters, we also have. I'm trying to work out where my camera is exactly. We also have a um, a live draw later on from the goldfish bowl. The goldfish bowl. Um, brilliant. So we've got lots and lots of entries. Loads have rushed in over the last couple of days. So even more in there and we've got multiple dinosaurs and tarsiers and all sorts of brilliant things thylacines so things prehistoric things said to be extinct and some of the more kind of normal stuff as well bulldogs and all sorts so hopefully i've collected all of your entries and they're all in there and also rather excitingly today i'm thrilled to have a, a good friend of mine who's going to be coming over um and join us for a bit of an interview later on. So Simon Watt, and you may have seen him on um, the BBC, um, on BBC Wildlife and does animal autopsies. He's an amazing um, advocate for ugly animals. Not that these are. Hello, incredibly busy. How are you doing? Um, so yes, so that's rather exciting. And um, he yeah, is part of the Ugly Animals uh, Preservation Society and, and does comedy and stuff. Um, a podcast called Level Up Human, which is absolutely fantastic. And also he's doing something tonight, which we'll talk about later on. Um, Simon Watt off of the telly. Yes, exactly. Simon Watt off of the telly. So bona fide TV star as well, which is rather exciting. So yes, so we're, we're moving up in the world. This is all very, very exciting. Brilliant animal. There we go. And he's on the Ugl Ugly Animal Society. I'm here and ready anytime you need. So I'll give you a shout and say, Ugly Animal Society, I need you. And then you can sign in. That'll be brilliant. Thank you. Hi, Fallen Angel. Lovely to see you as well. So, yes, as to say, today we're going to be making otter. So we've got uh, otter talk. And Simon's going to have some good otter facts. And also um, the live draw later on. So I think we'll get started. So I have a bit of grommet or stone colour for the chest. Some white for eyeballs. Some black for the pupils. Possibly grey for the nose or black for the nose. You can choose. That's absolutely fine. And a good supply of brown plasticine. As I say, with all these things, Duncan and children here in rainy Somerset from Broken Shark Cage. That's brilliant. Excellent. Hello. Lots of uh, lots of people waving. That's really nice. And incredibly busy. Loves otters. So yes, and yay otters from Fallen Angel. So popular choice today. Well, as I say, not a choice. Whatever comes out the, the goldfish bowl is what I have to make. So I'm beholden to that and I'm nothing if not a stickler for the rules. So I'm going to start by making, I'm going to take one and a half strips. Now you can do these any size at all, but so we're going to use the shapes uh, for here and I'm going to join the clay together like so and squash it up and get it warm. Now the trick with this is always to get the clay nice and warm. Any carrots today? Um, a couple, I think, actually later on. The main body is more of a sausage shape to start off with. He needs tiny fish, says Caroline. Yeah, you could accessorise your otter as well. That would be really, really great. Um, again, I've been having problems with um, uploading afterwards. So you'll be able to watch this on my live section afterwards uh, for up to 24 hours. But I do also have an iPad over here 
which is um, which I've probably just put my fist into, um, which is also going to be recording that, and I will be getting onto that this weekend of putting those others up there. Louise Pohl, you hoo hello, <laughs> hello Louise, how you doing? <laughs> oh, that's really nice. So get your clay nice and warm. As I say, you could use a hairdryer, but we're going to go environmentally friendly. And I've made well, I seem to have made a poo for all you poo fans. Not one for the carrots, but a nice sausage if you like otherwise. And we're going to make a nice long sausage. It could even be a carrot, actually, if you wanted to. Now, I've made a couple of different otters, so there's a slightly different technique here. And I might go for a kind of combination of the two. Lovely. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make, I am going to make a carrot. There you go. I've already bent to pressure. <laughs> And it's my good friend Maggie as well, Maggie Earl, and she's she's been pressuring me for years to make an otter. So um, she's an absolute star and that's her favourite animal. So finally, after what, 10 years of knowing you, something like that, I'm finally, finally doing it. So I'm making a kind of carrot shape, upside down carrot, a big chunky carrot, not one of the posh ones. And I'm going to just bend the end over like so, and I'm going to make the head. So the upside down carrot technique and I'm going to start to tease out a little bit of a muzzle or a nose. Now they don't have much, got quite short faces actually. Dog otters tend to have a larger nose um, than males but um, as with most things they seem to have bigger noses. I know that I do. There we go. Love it. This is actually rather good because I can actually see all your comments coming up real time as well rather than having my phone and having the delay as well. So it's been a really nice week, actually. I've had loads and loads of great entries uh, from you, and hopefully I managed to show most of those on Instagram as well. Um, some brilliant creativity, and again, we seem to be running out the online stores for modelling clay as well. As I say, you can buy it direct from uh, New Clay Products. Uh, they're a lovely family company in Newton Abbott in uh, Devon, and you can either call it over the phone or, or email you or email them, rather, and they will supply you with, with clay as well. Um, and you can order it by uh, the box. It's about 20 packs as well. Carrots. There we go. Special <laughs> special makers. Brilliant. Lovely. Excellent. And what I'm going to do now, hopefully you can see that. I'm going to pull that towards you slightly out of the light, but you can see the silhouette shape of it. So we're forming the basic shapes of our otter. And now what I'm going to do is actually tease out the bottom of that, or the top of the carrot, if you like, the broader part. I'm going to get my finger in there and create a bit of a wedge, give him a wedgie. And then I'm going to start to tease out haunches because we're going to go for a standing. Now, um, Sophie Pitt, um, she requested a lying down otter. Now, you could do that. And you could just lie down like that, simple, and then bend the head up. That's more of a sea otter kind of thing, actually. I hate to be a pedant. Um, but yes, again, otters come in all sorts of different sizes. And sea otters do particularly lie on their backs and hold often hold an anvil, I think it's called, a stone to their chest and then smash clams and things like that as well. Uh, KMO forces, how old were, were you when you started doing this? Question from my five-year-old Olive. Well, hello Olive. Um, I was about your age actually, I was four or five and I spent a lot of time getting lots of plasticine into the carpet and Play-Doh and ruining carpets. Um, top tip, if you do find it with you ruined carpets with with uh, modelling clay plasticine is if you use lighter fluid, go to a pound store and buy some lighter fluid. Um, so it fine to carpet, it's over. No, no, it's not that at all. Um, it does actually melt your modelling clay. I shouldn't be saying that kind of thing, really. Um, yeah, it's good for melting plasticine. We'll get it out of the clay, out of the carpet. But may I recommend uh, hardwood flooring, much more hygienic and, uh, yes, much more healthy and stylish as well. <laughs> so I've got a pair of very stumpy legs. I'm going to put some feet onto there in a little bit. Now, I always find that I've made the body a little bit too short, so you can start to then stretch that body out. And once you've got little arms and legs, you can start to then really see the length. So I've got a little way to go. I think I'm going to go a little bit longer, so I'm going to elongate that body. There we go. <laughs> yes, it is a family show, Lou, you're right. Actually, I shall uh, yeah, not mention um, arson. It's not a great thing to go for. How did I get into Ardman? Well, um, I spent a couple of years working in Wales um, 
for small animation companies making sci-fi adventures and um, I think I work with well I know I work with a company called Arg who are no longer with us but are um, around in various forms in animation um, and we made a Chaucer's, uh, Chaucer film uh, The Miller's Tale um, so I worked in Cardiff and then this is the beginning of Chicken Run well towards the end of Chicken Run actually um, they um, How Tall Are the Otters well these I would say are about 10 12 centimeters maybe something like that but you can change your sizes it doesn't really matter too much i've used one and a half strips for the body and that's going to be enough so then from this other half i'm going to have enough then for the tail and for the legs and feet as well the front legs and feet um so yes it was the last year of of chicken run and i joined in january uh january the 2nd of 2000 so it's been quite some time i've been doing this for 23 years now so yes it's a little while but I joined in the press mold department making beaks and cheeks and wings and sanding rubbery bits of chicken, the silicon parts of the chickens and making all the plasticine elements. And um, yeah, that's how I started and then moved on. I discovered clay making really um, through, I suppose, the gateway drug was Play-Doh. And Play-Doh is difficult to work with because it doesn't stick together very well, um, but is a great gateway for younger children with smaller hands as well. There we go. So Dave Hingley. Now Dave Hingley is an old college friend as well. We went to university in Pontypridd together, and um, I don't know Dave will be able to to, um, to to confirm this as well. But on the River Taff, which we used to cross to get to the old girls' college by the crematorium in um, in uh, yes, in just outside Pontypridd, um, there were lots of otters, and of an evening you would often see an otter if you were crossing the bridge as well. Brilliant. So there we go. That's our basic body shape. So we've got a head, a muzzle and some funny little legs like that. As I say, you can make them a bit longer and I might tease it out a little bit later on. But I'm going to move on to the tail. So I'm going to take my clay and I've got four lines here. Break it in half like so. And I'm going to squash the clay up, give it nice and warm again. And this time, carrot fans, it's another carrot. This one for a good sturdy tail. Now you could use other colours as well. You don't have to exactly be... Dave Hingley remembers, there we go, confirmation. So uh, so that's good to, there we go, I wasn't going mad. I didn't just see otters, they were, well, they weren't sea otters, they were <laughs> European otters. So a nice carrot for you carrot fans. And we're gonna put the carrot onto his bottom, onto the bum and smooth it in. And if you've got the clay nice and warm, it should. Can you tell us again where we can buy the clay? Of course. Um, I think you can still buy it from Cassart or Hobbycraft online. Um, you can find it on Amazon, but I tend to buy it direct from uh, the family company. So it's New Clay Products and it's called New Plast. So it looks rather like, let me get a bar out for you to have a look at. You can get rainbow packs like this and you get eight different strips. Or you can buy a box and that's a minimum order and you get 20 colours in there. And you can choose your 20 colours. All the colours are online. There's 28 colours to choose from or different packs to choose from. Um, and it works out much, much cheaper. It's about £3.50 a pack, I think, in Cass Art, and it's a lot cheaper than that, so that's a good way of doing it. More carrots, exactly, always. <laughs> so make sure your tail is really well attached. You don't want that dropping off later on. And I'm just going to push up the crotch a bit there, give it a little bit of a tummy, and then you can bring the tail down because the tail is very much like a rudder and will help to balance there um, and Lizzie's just joined us as well and that reminds me I will be posting up other films that I've been recording over the weekend I've just run out of time to be honest um, it seems to take up a lot of my time and um, I will be posting those as well so that is a gym parking guarantee and those of you who know me will know that might take a few days to come to fruition but it will eventually happen there we go so nice so I'm gonna add some ears at this stage as well some little tiny ears so I've got this little bit of clay here. I won't need a lot. So you can make two like little apple seeds. They've got very small ears. Um, obviously there's lots of different otters. In Bristol Zoo, they've got short uh, Asian short clawed otters and they've got a little round face. Um, European otters have got a more dog-like face. You can see that. Look, there we go. Back into the light a little bit. There we go. Um, you can push that little apple seed on at the pointed end drag it across the face and add that in. And you can use a tool or a cocktail stick or a paintbrush handle to make a little indent into the ear as well. Now, there we go. Now, I've got a little bit of gray in there, but you can always shave that off afterwards. 
great we look for chameleons last night but made lambs instead well i think lambs yeah they call the lambs the chameleons of the farm um so that's um that's good um so i will be posting that one as well is there a particular hardwood floor that's best for model making to <laughs> works um well i think any any work really um ones that if you've got a wheelie chair ones that won't get ruined by wheelie chairs um so yeah go hardwood flooring generally try and buy local if you can excellent there's homewood cheeses my favorite favorite cheeses it's the only cheese guaranteed to please <laughs> i will take advert requests as well that's um i'm easily bought there we go <laughs> excellent that's one ear so i'm going to put another tiny piece of clay on to make the other ear do i like carrots um yes um it looks like I don't eat enough because I've lost my ginger hair. Although I would say ginger hair is mostly down to uh, eating cheesy watsits, and that's how I used to top them up. But I'm currently on a diet, and I've even started running as well. Yeah, I've become one of those running bores. So uh, I'd like to tell everybody that I've been, but I've done one run, so I'm not sure. I'm but that's the start of a running career again, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Fabulous. So a nice pair of ears like so and i'm going to rest that on his um on his stumps for the moment and i've got two sticks left and i'm going to split those in half like so so we've got two sticks and split those sticks in half as well like so and i'm going to make the feet first so actually turns out it's packed full of carrots and otter so little carrots again to make the feet to go on to the bottom so we're gonna make little round little fat carrots and give them a slight press down you can use them on the table and almost like a hemis carrot a hemi carrot a half carrot like you cut a carrot in half so do the other side I'm inventing new and exciting words try joe wick's morning pe lesson at 9 a.m uh no no i don't think i'll be i'll be doing that um <laughs> Um, my wife makes me do the centre fit one with um, with Thor, and uh, and that does make me very Thor as well. We <laughs> um, so I'm building up building up fitness, mental and physical. So try and make them the same size. That's the other one. No, yes, it's all true. I'm afraid. And Shona's waving. Brilliant. I hope you're enjoying it. Shona, Shona's had a a good time of it last week because we did pandas, and Shona's a big panda fan. So. Um, so who knows what we'll get next week i don't think we've, i'm not sure if we've got any more pandas in the mix there might be more pandas so um you might have seen the other day that i also put on um a video for uh, a dog well a pug yesterday pug seemed very popular um so that was a different video so if it, an animal same animal does come up again lots of pandas there fancy dress friday is amazing i dressed as sam <laughs> <laughs> you have to show us pics that's amazing um so i'm going to put the toes in using the cocktail sticks and add some creases in there as well brilliant and simon i will be with you very shortly i'm going to put the feet and the legs on and then when it comes to putting the front patch on then i'll give you a i'll give you a shout brilliant hopefully the otter weather will be back <laughs> in fact you know what i'm going to join you now um in it well very shortly um yes very very shortly fabulous um, yeah, a couple more minutes and we'll uh, we'll have our brilliant interview as well. Gromit in London has joined. Excellent. Hello, Gromit in London. Fabulous. So I'm just going to get these bits on and then we can relax into putting more patterning and stuff on. Um, and that will be a really good point to have our chat about otters and also the amazing work that Simon does. Now, Simon and I uh, met at the BBC, um, BBC workshops uh, through Ivan Animations doing the Wallace and Gromit World of Invention roadshow um, and that's where we met and um, he's an amazing um, science communicator and does amazing shows over the years um, communicating for families and children um, amazing um, different figures from history and amazing bits of scientific theory and making it understandable for children and adults as well so he's absolutely brilliant and we met at smash fest in deptford as well we re-met there um, it's a lovely uh, a lovely science uh, festival in Deptford as well and uh, which I've done several years with my sea machine show the amazing sea machine and that's been absolutely brilliant um, so yes I'm very excited to have a chat with him as well Oz hello Oz how are you doing really nice to see you again so lots of people uh, 
popping up again as well. Um, so yes, I'm going to start to do some more uh, programming if this isn't enough next week. Also, actually, I might put on a poll thing over the weekend as to whether people would like more live sessions um, with, and uh, or videos. So um, that'd be really good. I'd just like to know what people are thinking, really. So Dave Hingley is asking, hey, Jim, what tools are you using to shape the plasticine? Well, mostly I use a cocktail stick uh, and pencils, but um, I've got this old faithful tool that I've been using for many, many years. Um, there we go. You can see the back legs there. Smooth that in. So we've got a nice solid stand um, and you can adjust the tail to make him stand nice and straight. Um, uh, you could use the back of a paintbrush as well. That's really, really good. More live sessions, please. Brilliant. Well, I'd like to do some more of those. I might make it a daily thing. In some ways, it's a little bit less work for me, so that's quite good. And then I can post the films afterwards with less problems. So when the internet goes down, it's a little bit of a battle to make sure I've got everything for you. So we're going to make some front legs now. So we've got these two other halves, I'm making two more carrots. So actually, this is packed full of carrots. I, I, I completely lied about the carrots there. I like the videos. It says, uh, yes, brilliant. OK, well, there'll be more of those as well. There'll always be a, a backup video to show this as well. And today I'm shooting over the shoulder again. So that seems to work really well. So I'll make a carrot and then I'm going to slightly flatten it. And it's hard to see there. There we go. Flatten the end and I'm going to make a paw. And you could pull out a separate a little thumb and a paw. Or you can just add lines on there. I'm going to add lines because it's going to be a little bit quicker to show you. But as I say, you can spend a bit more time making these. Um, and really get into detail. You can make them nice and cartoony or go very naturalistic. So I've made one hand and I'm just going to show you the features there above the comments. Brilliant. Excellent. And we're going to make a second one of those. Again, a left and a right arm. So we've got uh, something. I love the live interaction, but if I can't join you live, Finding the videos is fab. Thank you so much. Well, that's really nice to hear. Thank you. Well, I'm trying to trying to keep that going as well. So trying to make sure I back these up. It's taking me a little while. Um, it's a steep learning curve. It's only my third week of doing this, fourth week of doing this. So um, every day, in every way, I'm getting better. Well, not every day. Some days I'm worse. But trying to, to make these as kind of fun and informative as possible. So it's nice to add the live session as well. So I'm going to just finish these hands. And attach those now you can have a nice pose for the arms we can have them hanging down in that kind of good otter stance now you might find they're a little bit long and you can then shorten them as well so i'm going to add mine about there and it might be that you need to lengthen your body a little bit there we go studio apanad sorry i apologize for the pronunciation um there we go um agrees as well they like the live videos as well that's really great lovely well i'll try and have as much interaction and remember the ones that you see online are um uh speeded up versions um the three minute video and obviously you can go to the uh, youtube channel and you can find all the videos on there um including the one i did for camp festival um with the Easter bunnies and also the farm camp one I've been doing uh, with the lambs as well as a response to lambing live. So put the arms on like so, and then you can smooth those in. As I say, you can spend a bit more time than I am, but I'm doing this rather quickly to get to the exciting chat with my good friend, Simon. Lovely. So Simon, if you'd like to um, press the two smiley faces on the front there, hopefully you'll pop up and I'm gonna have to come very 3D at you now. Let's hopefully we can make this work. As I say, I'm operating alone. So, um... ah, yes, let's see. Cycling through, do bear with me. Going through, going through. Ugly animals is unable to join me. No, oh, that's weird. Um. It says on the bottom of the screen, there's two little smiley faces. You see it where it says comment. There's only a live button. Oh, that's peculiar. Um, I can try and join you. Um, let's see. I'll have a go. We might not have a live session in the end. Um, 
Let's see, let me scroll through. It's saying you're unable to join for some reason. Um, ah, well that's weird. Oh yes you can, okay, brilliant. Yeah, if you press that, press the smiley face, and then you should pop up. It should send a request to me to, uh, to join in as well. So what I'm gonna do now is add um, some of this lighter color, and that will enable us to uh, add in the facial patches. Um, yes, I'll see whether that works or not. Um, I don't think I'll be able to FaceTime. What I might do is actually um, record another little video uh, and FaceTime uh, with with Simon later on, and then I'll put that out as a bonus video as well. That would be great. So sorry, Simon. I'm still learning with this, and I'm without my uh, without my uh, assistant today. So um, so yes, but no. Thank you for thank you for helping. Um, yeah, I'm not sure why we can't join. I'm going to have one more go. But I'm not sure why I'm unable to. Just pressing a button and you're getting a good shot of my sweaty head. And I've changed the camera now. And now, so you're actually seeing live into. The... <laughs> there we go. So um, we're going to be without the video today, I'm afraid. Um, but I will uh, speak to Simon later, and we'll record a little thing, hopefully, for that as well. So, um, so yes, learning with technology. So I'm just adding a bib around the muzzle. I'll find out why that's why that's not working today um, later on. Thanks, Simon. That's absolutely brilliant. I really appreciate it. And sorry to mess you around. I'm still learning, as I say. And George, uh, <laughs> my mum loves your work. Not your face, though. My big face. It's all true, George, with this tiny little praying mantis like features. He's a, a good friend of mine who I work with and makes amazing sculpting tools as well. So if you follow uh, what George 88 you'll see that he sells these beautifully handcrafted sculpting tools out of buffalo horn and wood as well. He's um yes, he's a terrible human being, but a very good um, tool maker and sculptor. And um, we do a lot of live workshops together as well. So you can see I'm just starting to spread the clay down. So if you get it really, really warm, Absolutely fine, mate. No, you've been an absolute star. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm really learning along the way. And Simon very kindly joined us and joined Instagram um, for this especially. Um, but I have uh, failed him <laughs> and failed all of you. But I will resolve this and work out some way of recording a little video as well. Um, he's an absolutely brilliant chap and um, you won't miss out on his amazing facts um, another time as well. What is my favourite animal? Well, I have loads and loads of favourite animals. It changes from day to day. Some old favourites. I don't like being told no, so I'm a big fan of um, recently extinct animals, and two of my favourites are Tasmanian tiger or the thylacine, uh, the great orc, and Stella sea cow. Um, but also I'm a big lover of acarpies and eye eyes. So, um, all sorts really. <laughs> um, so yes, I've, I've joined Keeper Experiences for the day several times um, and um, done that in Norfolk and also at Bristol Zoo as well, which is a fantastic zoo. In fact, they've got two, we have two zoos, two zoos um, in Bristol. We have uh, the Wild Project, Wild Place Project, and obviously the third oldest zoo in the world, Bristol Zoo as well, which is an inner city zoo. Beautiful old Victorian buildings and of amazing things. Um, Rusty Studio says my favourite animal is orangutans and gorillas. Well we've done orangutans, no one has suggested uh, gorillas so um, if you want to suggest gorillas then we can put that in for next uh, for the following week's draw. Um, might try and do some specials. Uh, George was involved with um, those Ardman Creature Comforts celebrating David uh, Attenborough as well. I don't think he made the gorilla, but he was certainly involved with that as well. So um, yes, George, very talented model maker, but as I say, a terrible, terrible human being. So um, yeah. So you can carry this down, this patterning, and throw clay around if you like, and make that nice bib. And this is a nice technique because you're almost painting with clay. You can smooth it in and you can graduate it and you can even put some texture on. So if you wanted a, an otter that looked like it had come out of the water, then you could drag the tool across and make some broad lines, and that would give you a really nice look as well. 
favourite animal is a beetle. Excellent, beetle is a great. What kind of beetle is your favourite? Uh, my favourite is um, animal is otters and elephants. That would be amazing. Let's make a blobfish. Simon is still following us, which is rather splendid. Um, I would love to make a blobfish. Um, I think it's... Um, I was saying if we do the um, talk about Northern Lights, which is one of my favourite favourite books, and you talk about what would be your demon. Um, unfortunately, I think the demon I would have would be a blobfish, and I'd probably have to live in a di diving bell on the bottom of the deep sea, unable to go anywhere with this rather ridiculous-looking, quite human-looking blobfish that just sits around. Um, so I think that would probably be my fate, trapped at the bottom of the ocean for the rest of my short life. Uh, we've got stag beetle is, would be a great beetle to choose actually to offer that as well broken shark caves uh, great uh, hammerhead shark it's a corker that is an absolutely brilliant one husband says warthog I say otter uh, warthogs would be amazing as well well there's not been one I've not enjoyed so far um, even the potato uh, gave me great pleasure so um, so yes like I say even the most unpromising prospect um, can turn out unexpected results so you can spend as much time as you like on that but we've got a nice bit of patterning in there um lovely now i've seen as i say otters in fact there's otters on our local stream and kingfishers i live very close to the um what they call the halcyon river so if you're a fan of wildlife films and you know the work of photographer charlie hamilton james um he lives or lived not very far away from me and that is where they shot those amazing kingfisher films and uh, films about otters as well and you're pretty much guaranteed to see an otter of an evening and I say there's about a 70% chance of seeing um, seeing kingfishes on the stream as well, which is rather beautiful. Very lucky to live where we do. Uh, not in the posh bit, but um, but we're very close to it. And the potato rocked. I love it. Potatoes do rock. <laughs> Squirrels, please. Yeah, well, name a squirrel and send it over and I'll try and remember this and watch this through again so we can actually make some of those for you as well. I'm going to add a nose now. So I'm going to take a little bit of black clay and I'm going to make a kind of flat square, almost like a tutti frutti if we're going to use it as a food analogy. Uh, again, you can change the size of the nose and I'm going to add that on the front, like so above the text that are coming in. Lovely. And squash that on. Add a pair of nostrils as well. Lovely. So I'm Sorry about our special guest, and sorry to Simon, but I will resolve that issue. Um, and it might be that actually we're going to start doing some YouTube lives. We might actually put that as a platform and then we'll be able to share it onto Facebook and onto, um, post it onto here as well. So that might be the go the way. I might... Um, would people follow me onto YouTube if I would carry on doing these? I'm thinking it might be a better platform for actually having interaction with people as well. So do let me know. I shall put a swing on my on stories as well and i'd really like to know your opinion as i say i'm learning every day trying something new as i say i think we found a better angle for the making of videos and as i say i'm backing the, these live sessions up with that so attach your nose um so i'd be really i would really like to uh, you know know your opinions as well um so i'm going to add some eyes so i'm going to take a pencil and make a couple of holes for the eyes one on the left one on the right Quite well spaced. Yes, we would follow you. Brilliant. Excellent. That's really good to know. Thank you so much for your instant feedback as well. It's much, much appreciated. As I say, I'm trying to find a way of spreading this as far as possible. Um, and as I say, do have a look at the website. Do go on to my YouTube channel, which is uh, Jim Parkin, P-A-R-K-Y-N. And I'd really, really love it if, um, if people go and have a look at that and um, I hit 100 followers on my YouTube channel. It's only been up a couple of weeks, so feeling quite pleased with that. That's really great. Uh, YouTube's great. You can post across both uh, Learning Like You. Thank you, Broken Shark Cage. Now, Broken Shark Cage is an amazing artist and has a shed to die for, uh, or stuff that shed, a shed that stuff died in. <laughs> He's got an amazing collection of beach combing and bones and all sorts of amazing stuff, and does amazing art classes, and um, is just an amazing artist. Um, so thank you for the top tip. I shall try and do that. So next week I might put the whole thing over to YouTube and then we'll be able to share it on different platforms. Oh, that's very kind of you, Lizzie. Thank you. Um, 
Uh, Lizzie is saying about buying me a coffee. Physically impossible in this world, but you'll find on my website there is a buy me a coffee option. And um, if you would like to donate some money to pay for help pay for edits and um, help support this buy me more plasticine, um, then you can do that. Some people have already done that, so I haven't really mentioned it because I don't really like to talk money. But um, obviously my time um, I give gladly and the materials, but this will keep the doors open and keep us going as well. So if you'd like to donate, I would be very, very, um, very grateful. But if you haven't got the money, I completely understand. As I say, not all of us are earning and I'm not watching my wife supports me in this in this madness so um so i'm very thankful to her for that um we're gonna make some eyeballs now but you can i think it's in three pound increments you can buy me one coffee i'd be uh yeah i'd love that send me a message as well that'd be great we, i'll get you a few lattes <laughs> thank you very much uh thank you lizzie that's really kind of you now lizzie you remember from last week um when we did make the uh make social media work and um we have a really interesting talk about uh, the work she does uh, rescuing seal pups and work with cetaceans. Um, she's also a brilliant blue healing uh, coach and you can find her. Um, take a look at her on Instagram as well. She lives in beautiful Perrinport and often posts a live video from the beach, which is an absolute delight. And um, if you're missing the water like I am, then that's a real boon as well. Absolutely love it. And we're going to be doing a session at making plasticine seals at some point when we're uh, free and we'll be doing our amazing scene uh, on the beach and raising awareness about what to do around seals and um, yeah absolutely fantastic lovely so I'm going to add the pupils and again you could give them brown eyes if you wanted to I'm just going to put some little balls of black clay on as normal and add those on and we're almost ready for the bit you've all been waiting for the uh, the big draw live so just going to pop the pupils on and the little holes in the middle just to make them pop out. There we go. Hopefully you can see that. And that, you could add whiskers if you wanted to as well. Use a bit of fishing line or something like that. That is our finished otter. So as I say, if you're making along, please do share your pictures. A lot of you have been doing that and that's absolutely amazing. I've been really loving that. And I'm going to place those... There, so we've got three otters together, so several different styles there. So say so you could do a seated one, one on all fours, like we did with the pug yesterday. Um, you could extrude the limbs out as well, and that would give it a really nice snake-like quality. Um, watching this is the highlight of my day. Thank you, Jib. Oh, thank you so much, uh, Redwood84. That's brilliant. Thank you. Um, great. Lovely. That's so nice. Um, so it's that exciting time. I'm going to clear the decks for the moment you've all been waiting for. The goldfish bowl, full, packed, look at that, absolutely packed, packed full of amazing animals. And thank you, George. And Shenu is there with the drum roll. So we're gonna pick with my pincer like claw and pull out the first, it's just one, it feels like a large piece of paper. So it's obviously large writing. Ah, now that's a strong start to the live session on Monday is going to be. Can you all see that? Now it's back to front, so you can't see it. But those of you who can read backwards will see that is a badly written word. And that is narwhal. So I'm going to stand that one up. Narwhal will be Monday's live draw, uh, live session. And I'm going to go in again. And this one's a thinner one. And this one is... You can read backwards again. Ducks. We've got ducks. So we're going to have a duck video. Might actually go live all next week and then pack back this up with videos. So we're going to have ducks next week. So that's Tuesday. Monday is exciting. That's narwhal. That's very exciting. Followed by the sloth. So that's number three. This is very exciting. Some really great animals there. Followed by, I've been waiting for this one to arrive, dinosaurs. So Thursday is gonna be dinosaurs. 
And looking away again, just to prove that I'm not cheating, I'm going to give it a really good stir. And I'm going to go for the side for this one. A woodlouse. Now I might, I'm not sure I can do anything new with a woodlouse. So we've done woodlouse, so I'm going to put that to one side. So I might do that as a bonus one if I ever think about it. I'll keep that to one side. Tortoise on Friday. And one last one. Big stir up. The vortex of paper. And Saturday <laughs> is camel. So special because it's crying. I don't know why. This is amazing. Is that because you wanted more woodlice videos? We do already have a woodlice video. Um, so I wouldn't worry too much. You can go and find it online. That's still there as well, I think. If not, it will be coming up. So I'm very happy with dinosaurs. Um, I'm yet to decide what dinosaur we do, but great selection. Thank you, George. Uh, another eclectic week. Epic. Brilliant. So thank you all so very much for joining in. Tomorrow's film is going to be koalas. So um, I'm going to film this shortly after this. I'm going to speak to Simon and apologise profusely to him for um, being a Luddite. Um, <laughs> oh, I see. Special Nicholas arm fell off. That's rather unfortunate. Um, so thank you all so much for joining me. Keep an eye out on Saturday for the koala video. And um, oh, Triceratops from Shona there. Squirrels, uh, for sure. Thanks. <laughs> So thank you all so much for joining me in the Clay Cave for Community Clay Time and see you next week live, all next week. Thank you very much. I'm going to lean towards the camera and have a fab weekend everybody.